Okay guys, today we're going to be doing a video that's a little bit different, but still definitely EDC related. And today we're going to be talking about EDC knives that excite me. Now this is kind of a funny title, but ultimately what I'm getting at is I want to talk about EDC or everyday carry knives that I am excited or that I love to carry in particular. And I think that in EDC, you know, we try to orient our EDCs. We try to orient our EDCs to match our lifestyle or what we enjoy in particular. And I think that's what makes EDC such a fun thing is it allows you this idea to get gear, whether it be watches, flashlights, knives, guns, that make you genuinely happy to carry them, to use them, to, you know, actually own these things. So I thought I'd start off, start out with knives and talk about a few knives that make me genuinely excited to use them, to carry them, and to own them. And this list isn't necessarily about the most expensive knives, the most cheap knives. There's a very broad range in price point, everything from over $500 down to, I think, about $60, $70. There are some, like I said, pretty cheap knives here, but there are some pretty expensive ones as well. So without any further ado, let's jump right into these knives. Okay guys, this is Matt from the future, just reminding you that if you want to see more Alaskan gun, EDC, survival, and bushcraft content, make sure that you hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and of course leave a comment and a like while you're at it. Okay, so now let's talk about it. So I think we're going to talk about my most exciting knife, or the knife that I genuinely love, albeit I don't EDC this knife too frequently, but it is probably one of my favorite EDC knives. Now this one is a little bit more challenging to find nowadays, unfortunately, but this is the Browse Blade Silent Soldier V2, and this is in the particular drop point version but this is a tiny little neck knife and it is just such a fascinating knife because you have these two holes that you put your you know uh, index finger and your ring finger through and then your middle finger goes right here or right here I should say and uh, it's a three finger knife it's just really weird design and when you look at this knife you're like how in the world does this thing work but uh, it does work pretty darn well now like I said Browse Blades is kind of gone missing if you will from the knife community he's not really or Jason Browse isn't really um, making much anymore but he did make these silent soldiers for quite a while and if you are really ambitious about getting one you know these things still turn up on the secondary market very occasionally but for the most part these guys are pretty hard to find but I really like carrying this little thing it's a tiny primarily neck knife driven EDC knife but it does the job very well and uh, this one I believe is made out of D2 um, but yeah, so this little guy is just really cool, and like I said, it's such a fascinating piece because, you know, the rest of these knives all kind of look like knives, or traditional knives, I should say. This does look like a knife, but uh, this is just such a different kind of knife, and it's so small, so compact, but yet is surprisingly comfortable to hold and use. So that is the Browse Blade Silent Soldier V2, uh, and like I said, this one's the drop point in particular. So moving on to another knife. This knife might not, this knife might actually surprise you that it excites me, but it is the Benchmade 556 Mini Grip. And the reason why this knife excites me is that it is just small knife perfection. Now, you'll kind of notice in this run up, I'm not a very large fan of small knives. Uh, this is actually the smallest knife of the group. And I gen generally don't really prefer smaller knives, but the 556 mini grip is just, I don't know how Benchmade managed to make a knife so small and so compact, but yet it fills the hand up well. You can still get a full four finger grip and uh, the knife just feels really good in hand. Not to mention, as I've talked about in other videos, this is a pretty capable kind of quasi survival or outdoors folder because it's so robust and it will still strike ferro rods off its spine. Uh, it's pretty capable. And this one I have gone ahead and I think made this knife as perfect as it can be by adding the Benchmade bug out clip to it. I still don't know why they don't add this from the factory because I think the mini grip, they add the full-sized kind of standard Benchmade clip, like it says Benchmade on it. In that Benchmade clip, 
is just too big for this knife. Like that's too much clip and it really covers about half of the knife. Whereas this uh, bug out clip, it one is deep carry. So that's an advantage. And two, I think the bug out clip actually matches the size of this knife. So like I said, I went ahead and added a bug out clip to this blade because I think it's a superior clip and really helps make this knife just perfect. Like the mini clip matches the mini characteristics of this blade. And I like how you can get kind of wild colors for the mini grip. This one of course is like a cyan blue and uh, it just looks great to me. The action is great, very smooth. And of course the lockup is solid. Just overall, it's hard to find a blade this small for me that feels so right. So we're going to jump over to the next kind of smaller blade, and this is the kind of last of the smaller knives, but it is the Spyderco Para 3. And I've had a few Spydercos over the years. I really haven't found a Spyderco that I didn't like, but the Para 3 for me is, in my mind, what the Paramilitary 2 should have been. This knife is just very compact in blade and in handle, and I feel like with the Paramilitary 2, it felt like there was always a lot of handle in comparison to the blade length. Like the blade felt small for the amount of handle that was given. Whereas the Para 3 feels like the blade to handle ratio is still smaller. Like the blade is still definitely smaller than the handle, as you can see. You know, it's still is a little bit, it feels a little smaller, but at the same time, it feels better. Uh, the handle to blade ratio feels better on the Para 3 than the Paramilitary 2. That's why I don't really carry the Para 2 or Paramilitary 2 anymore. Uh, the Para 3 is just much better, uh, in my opinion. And once again, similar to the Mini Grip, um, there's tons of traction and the handle, whether you're choking up on the choil or whether you're back on the actual handle itself, feels really good, feels feels pretty right. Once again, similar to the mini grip, I think the only thing that I dislike about the Para 3 is the fact that the clip is a standard uh, Spyderco clip and it just feels very large. Like you can see that it takes up over half of the handle and I dislike it when you have these small knives that companies just throw a generic clip on because usually you know, these generic clips are meant for much larger knives and or at least larger handled knives. So when you have a smaller blade, you can see that your clip just ends up taking up a lot of the blade. Like this is three quarters of the blade that that clip takes up. And so what that means ultimately is when you're handling it, you do get a little bit of a hot spot due to that clip because the clip is now so much further forward on your hand that it doesn't feel quite as right. So of course you can get aftermarket clips, but I'm saying out of box, this clip is a little bit too big. Aside from that, of course, this blade is very smooth with uh, the compression lock and of course no blade play out of that awesome compression lock. So very sweet package and when I want to go for a smaller EDC blade, usually I will grab one of these two guys and if I want to go as small as possible, the mini grip, but if I want something that's a little bit more substantial, the Paramil Para 3 is definitely the choice. So next to that is still talking about smaller knives and lightweight knives is the Benchmade Bug Out. This is the 535. I believe this is the BK2002. This is the Blade HQ exclusive with the green kind of, uh, with the green accents and the gray G10, but uh, in the 20 CV blade. But aside from that, uh, the bug out is a pretty fantastic knife. Now I have actually owned a stock bug out in the past and ended up letting that one go, but I wanted to get another one back because I really enjoy one thing about the bug out, and that is how you can have such a full sized blade or such a full sized knife in handle and in blade length but yet, because it's so thin and so lightweight, it still feels, I mean, it's actually, it's actually lighter than something like this mini grip, the, five, the 556 mini grip. It's actually lighter than that knife. It's just a larger package. So when I'm looking to carry something that I don't want to notice or that I don't want to, you know, deal with the bulk or the heft of the blade itself. Uh, I like having the bug out because it still gives me a lot of the features or a lot of the comforts that come from a full-sized knife but at the same time you know not you know, 
but at the same time, it handles weight very well. Like this thing really disappears. So whether I'm using this thing for outdoors, which I think that this is a well-suited knife for that as well, or if I'm EDCing it, uh, you know, kind of urban city life style, um, this knife just fits in very well. And of course, the axis lock, very smooth, a little bit stiffer on this one because it's still pretty new to the collection, but uh, it's it's working on, it's working its way to being smooth. So anyways, this is, like I said, the Bug Out 2002 uh, edition. So, or the 535 2002, I should say. And uh, yeah, there's this is just a really great knife, like I said, for having more of a full-size knife, but without that uh, heavier weight attributed to it. So now we're getting into some of the larger territory. Uh, the first one we're going to start out with that excites me is, of course, the Microtech Ultratech. I have a couple of these and have had a handful of these throughout the years, but uh, what what can I really say about the Ultratech? It's just, it's a really nice knife. It's a cool uh, kind of blade due to the fact that it's an OTF. And here in Alaska, we're actually legally allowed to carry OTFs and actually just about any knife uh, by law. We passed laws, I think it's going on nearly 10 years ago, but it's it's been a while, but we can legally uh, carry OTFs. So it's kind of one of those things that because we can, it's cool to have an EDC OTF because who doesn't like just popping out that blade and, you know, seeing like an, an OTF. Who doesn't like popping out a blade? You know, just popping it out in OTF style. So it's cool because it's an OTF, but at the same time, Microtech's Ultratech is, for the most part, pretty practical. Uh, that's the reason I chose this one. Of course, there are more self-defense options, such as daggers, fully serrated blades, tantos, but this is just a very standard drop point uh, in LMAX, and uh, it's like I said, a very practical blade. So that's why I like having this one is we're legally allowed to carry these guys. And so I like having something that like I can actually open boxes with. It's not too intimidating. Obviously, if you pull this out in front of a bunch of people and fire it, you know, if you pull it out and fire it like that, you're going to get attention because OTFs have a level of shock factor. But aside from that, uh, it's a fun blade to carry. And like I said, Microtech does an excellent job making really solid OTFs and... I've had a, quite a few of them, always enjoyed them, this one included. So now we're moving into a little bit more high-end territory. We're going to go with the, I think we're kind of working our way up size-wise, so we'll go with the large Sebenza 21 in that beautiful Tanto. And I know for a while I had an Insingo grind uh, Sebenza, but I, I do have to say I think the Tanto tip Sebenzas really take the cake. I mean, that drop point is great. I do like the drop point uh, Sebenzas and Incusis, but that Tanto just looks so intimidating. And the way that they grind it just, it looks awesome. I mean, the whole blade kind of just flows. And so I absolutely love the Tanto tipped version of the Sebenza and the large Sebenza, of course. And so this knife, uh, for me, it excites me because it's such a high quality blade, such a high quality knife, uh, Sebenzas, and really Chris Reeve knives as a whole, if you've been around the channel for any time, hold a very special uh, kind of part in my heart. Uh, I love uh, CRK. I think they make fantastic products that even if you modify them, you know, it, these knives are built to last forever, to keep on going, keep on trucking, and... Uh, yeah, there's nothing that I can really ever complain about with any CRK knife that I've ever owned. I love them all. They come so sharp out of box. And, uh, yeah, the grind is great. The uh, hollow grind does a great job at really just slicing through materials so effortlessly. And there's just a level of class to the CRK that's very hard to beat. And I love these knives for high-end carry. It's very hard to beat a good old CRK uh, 21 Sebenza, even though the 31 does exist. And I like the 31 just fine, but the 21 for me, I like the aesthetics a little bit more, and I like how the handle is shaped a little bit better. So especially with the inlaid versions of the 31, they have like a single piece of micarta or carbon fiber or wood, whatever the inlay material is. I like how this one has the dual kind of like there's two pieces of inlay. So I think personally to me it looks better and uh, I just like the lines of the 21 a little bit more than the 31. But 
still a fantastic knife, and there will probably be an Incusi added to this list shortly, just because I do love the Incusi as well, but for now, just the 21, and the 21 excites me, like I said, because it's a fantastic knife. So the last one on the list is the Benchmade 630 Skirmish. Now this is the full size, and admittedly, I don't EDC this blade too much anymore because it is a big, big girl. I mean, this is this is a big knife. If you guys can see, I mean, this is a large Sabenza right here, and uh, this is the 630 Skirmish. And you can see that it is a few inches. If you guys can see there, it's a few inches taller or larger or longer. Um, than the Sabenza, so this is by no means a small knife. And I'll show you some just for size reference. The earlier talked about 5D6 mini grip against the uh, skirmish, it is a big, big blade. So you guys can see that. Uh, that's why I don't EDC this too much, but this is a knife that when I do EDC it, it definitely excites me. And I really love having this knife in the collection, primarily because. I've said this before, but as I was uh, growing up, there were a handful of um, blades, EDC knives, kind of tactical folders that were grail knives for me. One of them was the Large Sabenza 21, which I've had a couple of them now, but this is my current. And the other was the 630 Skirmish. And these are not the easiest thing to get your hands on. They're, they may not be the hardest either. There's still quite a few that run around, but these have been long discontinued by Benchmade, I believe at least around 10 years. These have been discontinued, so they are harder to find. But uh, the Skirmish is made by Blackwood, and I love the way that this uh, blade is done. It's very unique. It has a very slight recurve to it, as you guys can probably see. It has a whole bunch of holes drilled in the top, and uh, the, just the whole blade profile is very different, very unique, similar to the you know CRK Tanto. It's just a unique looking blade, and I love the way it's done. And even to this day, you know when it came out in S30V titanium, you know it was definitely ahead of its time. But nowadays S30V is a pretty common steel, but still not bad. And you know it's a testament to the materials that were used to make this blade because S30V is still very prominently used in the knife community so this thing has held up and aged pretty well and once again these are not cheap knives they run in the same range as the Sabenzas uh, but overall it's just like I said for me it excites me because it is a grail knife and I look at it and it's such a striking design whether we look at whether you look at the handle whether you're looking at the blade or really the whole package you know together it's just such a striking design it's so different but yet large comfortable roomy and truly this could be an excellent tactical knife as much as it could be a box opener which it has definitely been for me but like i said i love this thing and uh it is a sweet sweet blade and definitely a grail knife for me. This is one of those knives that will never be going anywhere because I've wanted one for so many years and for a large portion of time it was just really out of my price range and by the time I would have the money to get this knife I could never find one. So I'm very grateful that the stars kind of aligned with this. I had the money and uh, I just went for this knife and uh, yeah so that is the number one knife that excites me. The 630 Skirmish is a very very awesome blade. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. As always God bless and I'm out.